Positive family, hope you're doing great. And most thank you is what we start our videos with because without you and your continuous support, none of this would have happened. So thank you. Without any further ado, we jump into today's topic which is introduction to emulsions. A very simple definition of emulsions is that they are dispersed systems of two liquid phases. So we have an insoluble liquid droplets distributed within another liquid. Similar to suspensions, emulsions are inherently unstable and we will have a separate video on the different instability issues that pharmaceutical emulsions can have. But first, let's know emulsions in a bit more details. Remember, we term the dispersed phase also the internal phase and the discontinuous phase. And we gave the dispersion medium other names like the external phase and the continuous phase. I wanted to point this out again here so you won't get confused if I use any of these terms interchangeably. Well, basically, we have two types of emulsions. Those are the oil in water and the water in oil ones. Depending on whether the oil or the water is the external phase, the emulsion is categorized. Meaning that, in the oil and water emulsions, we will have the oil droplets dispersed throughout the aqueous phase, making an oil and water emulsion. And examples of such emulsions include milk, yogurt and ice cream. When the reverse is true, Meaning the oil is the external phase, we will have water in oil emulsions. And an example of such is the margarine, in which water or milk is dispersed in the blend of vegetable oils and fat. Well, pharmaceutical emulsions can be administered orally, intravenously or rectally. And a special type of emulsions, that is creams, is usually applied topically. If we were asked how would we picture a pharmaceutically acceptable emulsion, what would we say? Well, let's start from the definition. An emulsion is a dispersed system of two liquids, so we would anticipate the emulsion or the pharmaceutically acceptable emulsion to be in just one phase, meaning that it is physically stable. Well, what else? Uh, actually, the patient will have to pull the dosage form, the emulsion here, from the container, right? So, an acceptable emulsion should enable easy removal of the dose from the container by having good flow properties. And this is the second criteria for pharmaceutically acceptable emulsions. And also, the patient would be adhered to his medication if it's aesthetically pleasing. This is in a special regard for the oral emulsions which are usually flavored to increase patient compliance or adherence to taking their medication. What other things do you think are essential for an acceptable pharmaceutical emulsions? Share your thoughts in the comments below, we love to hear from you. Well, although pharmaceutical emulsions are unstable and may be challenging to manufacture, they offer numerous advantages, such as being a good alternative to deliver drugs with low aqueous solubility. Here, the drug can be dissolved in the oil phase and, the, and then the oil phase can be dispersed in an aqueous one. And that can increase the absorption of such low aqueous soluble drugs. Formulating oil in water emulsions can also be used to mask unpleasant APIs. The API can be incorporated into the internal oil phase and the external aqueous phase can be then flavored. The same can be applied to the oils that can be used for therapeutic purposes. Emulsions again, like suspensions, can be used for patients having difficulty swallowing solid dosage forms. 
but unlike suspensions, they can be taken intravenously. And more specifically, they are used for total parenteral nutrition. With this, we come to an end to today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Here is a recap of what's been said. Until next time, stay fabulous wherever you are.